Hey, it's John Nemo. Welcome back to another episode of Nemo Radio. I knew I had to hit record on this as soon as I got this email. <laughs> I just was like, ah! And the reason is this email I just received, it reveals a timeless truth about lead generation, about sales, about business that I have had to have this lesson drilled into my head. It's a timeless truth and I wish I would have understood it sooner. And this is just, again, the latest reminder of how true this timeless principle is. And that is this simple reality of you win or lose based on client selection, period, end of story. You win or lose in business based on client selection. Now I'm talking about, obviously, if you're a coach, a consultant, a small business owner, if you have clients per se, not if you're necessarily well, even if you are selling a product, I, I, I guess I could argue that a Lamborghini dealership is really winning on client selection in terms of not having to haggle on price, correct? <laughs> Whereas Toyota or a lower end brand, maybe Hyundai, they're not necessarily always winning on client selection in terms of people being able to either afford their cars or haggling about the price or defaulting on payments. I would venture to say, and this is where I'm going with this podcast is, you know, the higher paying the client, the less headaches you have. That has been true for me. There's always exceptions, of course, but for the most part, the higher paying clients, the less headaches they provide. And there's so many reasons behind that. And what I wanted to really illustrate too on this is talking about pricing, because that's such a challenge for the coaches I work with, the consultants, even the small business owners, you know, CPAs, whatever it is that you do, people have such a hard time pricing their services. Um, and, and what I've really come to understand is you really want to be a category of one. So what's really interesting is I got this note from a former client who said, you know, and what's the great irony, of course, behind all of this, and I'm not here to talk bad about a former client, even though I'm about to, <laughs> is we killed it. We absolutely killed it on this person's um, campaign. We generated so many leads, the most we ever have in this category, like to the point where I was like, what are we doing? Like, what's this? There's something's going on. Like, is this, why is this campaign on steroids? It's going so good. I can't believe it. And this person was never happy and never satisfied and struggled to close any of the deals that we know of. Right. And so what was so interesting was when the, this is the client selection part, when the person came to me and signed up, it was all about the pricing. How low can you go, right? And so at the time, I was a little bit more in a scarcity mindset. So this is very common, right? I'm just going to let my guard down here. We all have that fear, right? Scarcity of like, I just want to get the deal. I want the money. I'll, I'll I'd rather take less just to get a deal. And so I took about, gosh, I probably took about half of what I normally charge. And the way I justified it to the person, because they kept haggling me down, was, listen, I'll do a prove-it deal. I'll sign a prove it deal. This is about half of what I normally charge. I'm not going to charge you my setup fee. Like I just was like, I way overdid it. Like this looking back, like I can beat myself up right? if I want. Like I brought them in as cheap as humanly possible because at the time I had a scarcity mindset. And sure enough, that client, this low paying client caused a high amount of headaches. The most of almost any client we've ever had. And in spite of all of that, our team just obliterated it. Like the most leads we've ever gotten, like, and they were quality. And, and there was all these issues, right? With the client not closing the lead, not calling the lead, not following up with the lead. Oh yeah, that person wanted to book a call. I guess I should call them like doy, like you know, to quote the eighties doy, remember that? But anyway, it was fascinating to me then to get this client's feedback, because of course, like any agency, we ask for feedback. And when we finish and this client said to me like, you know, I really liked your team. I really like the people I work with, da, 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 da. But, you know, you're you're way too expensive. You're like double what else I can find on the market for LinkedIn lead generation. You know, you, you charge way too much. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, that's fine. But I'm glad that I'm being compared to like these other agencies that are nothing like mine, right? So, so what's interesting is you win or lose based on client selection. And this client's number one criteria for whether or not I provided enough value, the agency was how much do you charge and how much cheaper can I get the same service? So again, it's like a car, right? You could say, well, I can buy a car with four wheels and an engine for $500, $1,000, or I can buy one for a million dollars, $100,000, whatever it is. 
but there's a big difference in the type of vehicle that you buy. And so one of the things I've tried to do, and this is kind of one of the takeaways from this episode for you is create a category of one. Make your business, your approach, your style, your service, whatever it is that you do so unique and so different that people have a hard time comparing it to others in your space. This is something I've heard Alex Hormazi talk a lot about, like do so many things you know, differently or uniquely so that people can't really have a fair comparison and be like, you know, well, everyone does the exact same thing you do. There's no variables, there's no difference. So I'm just gonna look at price. And so one of the things I've done with our LinkedIn lead generation agency to give you examples is I've said, hey, listen, I will personally write your LinkedIn profile. I will personally do your content or everything our team creates will be custom based on interviews with you. There's no templates. There's no off the shelf, um, copy paste, fill in the blank stuff. It's all custom written. And oh, by the way, it's written in your voice. Uh, we're going to actually transcribe our calls with you and get the transcripts and look at how you talk and how you turn a phrase and what words you choose and how you ask questions. And we're gonna actually turn that into LinkedIn messages and status updates and articles. And so that's part of how I differentiate Nemo Media Group from a lot of other LinkedIn lead gen agencies is listen, everything's hyper custom. It's either written by me personally or it's done in a custom fashion with you know a team of writers that I've personally trained and we take transcripts and we actually use your voice so that the real life you comes through LinkedIn as opposed to all the other nonsense out there that's templated and robotic and whatever. And the other big piece I always say too is uh, I hire the best talent possible. Everyone I have is at the top of their game. So my graphic designer does stuff for Martha Stewart and the New York Yankees, right? Like, and then I'm, a, I'm another one of that graphic designer's clients that they work with, right? So that's who's doing your LinkedIn profile header. And then my video guy that does our marketing videos for clients, uh, he's worked with uh, Netflix and done documentaries for them. And he trained under Hans Zimmer for, you know, movie soundtracks and all these things. And so I hire the best talent Therefore, I'm gonna charge you more because you're getting the best quality talent on the creative side. Uh, another differentiator I say is like, everyone I use who has hands on your account and who talks to you every day and who works on your stuff is based here in the US, right? I'm not doing a bunch of overseas, you know, bait and switch stuff where I sell you and then hand you off to a $5 an hour employee in the Philippines. Not that there's anything wrong with that and not that you can't use that as a model, but I don't wanna have that be my model because I wanna charge more. Right. And I want to have fewer clients that pay more. And so think about in your own business, your own service, whatever it is you offer, what can you do differently than the competition that makes it harder to compare you? Because, you know, people are going to come in if they're going to look at it and price shop and they're going to say, well, there's no difference. Uh, I'm just going to go with the lowest price. For example, if I look at cell phones where I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota for many years, I was like, well, cell phone coverage, I could use. Verizon, I could use AT&T, I could use Sprint, I think they're gone, I don't know, I could use T-Mobile, I could use this no-name network I've ever heard of. And what I would do to compare them is who has the best network coverage map in my area? Because a pain point I had as a consumer with AT&T back in the day where I live in Minneapolis was my calls would just drop all the time, my cell phone calls. Like I'm in, in my house, in my living room, and the calls just drop, drop, drop. So I got really mad at them and switched to Verizon, which at the time, had the best network. And I noticed it for years and years and years afterward with Verizon, you know, when we would travel around the Midwest to go visit relatives, uh, the calls and the data would stay, they wouldn't drop and you wouldn't lose signals. AT&T that happened all the time. And I'm talking 10, 20 years ago. What's interesting now is like Verizon's not as good as it used to be. The coverage is not as good. I, I probably should shop around, but I'm not in enough pain to do it. But that's something where you can be a category of one, because you're doing things differently. Like we've got a bigger network. We have more cell phone towers. That's why we charge more. Or if you're a coach or a consultant or a service provider, you can be a category of one because you do things differently, uh, especially if it's custom. You can't price custom. You can't compare custom. It's like saying, hey, I want to shoot a video. Um, I can either hire the video production company down the street and they're going to charge me one fee or I can hire Steven Spielberg and Martin Scorsese to produce my video. Right? Like, How do you get the guys that did E.T. and all, you know, all the biggest hits ever? Uh, how do you price them against, you know, the whatever the video shop down the street? So custom and the other lesson in this is brand building. So that's the other big thing is 
I've really tried to build a brand, a personal brand and a business brand so that people view it as high end. And that's the same thing you want to do. So how do you do that? What are some practical ways? First and foremost is to publish a book. So I published, I'm just pulling up one of my books. I have like seven or eight books I've published. They're behind me here on the video. See them, they're back on the wall. I've published multiple books and books are authority. Books are branding. You're an a established author. Now, the reality is anyone can write and publish a book. Self-publishing is easier than ever, but it does give you more gravitas, more authority, especially if you write about a topic and you do it very well. Like that's an authority marker. If you've been featured in certain outlets, legitimately featured, uh, inter- you know, I've been interviewed by the New York Times. I've been on Entrepreneur on Fire. Like I didn't pay to get on. I got featured on it. I um, Social Media Examiner, Inc. Magazine. Like I can throw out all these things of like my LinkedIn's official marketing blog had me on. Right. So you have these authority markers where you're kind of building this bigger brand. Now, at the end of the day, I've talked about this before. Content is still the currency. So whatever content you put out, the level of expertise that you demonstrate, that's still what is going to really convince people to work with you. But as far as building your brand and building your pricing out, really understanding those key components, whatever you can do to be different, unique, and better and become that kind of category of one is where you can really start saying to people, you know, what I would say to this former client is, yeah, we're twice, twice the average agency, but we're not, we're not the average agency. We're not doing what they do. Like, you don't get this and you don't get that and you don't get these additional things and you don't get this custom written and you don't just like if you say like i want you to build me a house you go in a house and they have a neighborhood and what do they say they're like well if you want the templated house we have three designs these are the floor plans take it or leave it oh you want a custom house that'll be twice as much but it's custom oh you want the standard cabinets this and this right so there you make that category of one and i think custom is one of the keys because people want a trusted expert. People want someone that they know can just do the job right the first time. And I think so many of us have been burned in the past where we came in through the expert, the guru, the owner, the partner, and then we got handed off to junior people on the team and they didn't do a good job and we felt misled and burned and frustrated. And then we got mad, right? And so I think that's one thing where you can say like, listen, if you want my expertise, my insight, or you want this all custom done, yeah, it's going to cost two to three times more than the average agency, but they're not doing a custom thing, right? There you go. That's a simple way to do it. So I just, I loved getting this email because of the irony of how good of a job we did. And then that that was the person's, you know, qualifier was, well, I'm just comparing you to the lowest price people. And that goes back to the whole lesson of this episode is you do win or lose based on client selection. And you always want to get as high paying of clients as possible and get rid of that scarcity mindset, myself included. Like there is something to be said for, you know, if you negotiate, if you win them on price, you're gonna lose them on price, right? So this is all from all these different business books, Alex Ramazzi's and everybody else's is like, yeah, you don't wanna be that person where they're comparing you to, I can find it cheaper, I can find it cheaper, I can find it cheaper. Because as my business coach, John Michael Morgan taught me years ago, with pricing, price is only an issue in the absence of value. So to give you an example of the average person in this category that we do done for you LinkedIn lead generation for, uh, this person um, got all these leads, didn't make any sales, whatever, you know, it was only paying this much a month. Someone else in the same category who we got far fewer leads for, but who was really good at closing, they closed $150,000 in sales. That's like a, I don't know, 20 time, 25 time return on investment. (laughs) So it's like blew it out of the water and this person has multiple months to go with us. Right. So it's like the value is there for this person. Like, yeah, I made these two sales. I got 150 grand. I'm only paying you X. Like this is a no brainer for me to keep going. Right. So again, that's the type of client you want where they see the value, they see the ROI. So man, I could go on and on, but I hope that's helpful. Just tattoo that phrase on your forehead. So you can see it in the mirror every day. Remember the movie Memento where he like writes and tattoos all over his body, all the clues do that. Like you win or lose based on client selection. I cannot say it enough for me and for you. So hope you find that helpful. I'll put lots of resources in the show notes about sales and you know, how to increase your prices, all those different things. So you can find that some helpful free tips. Thank you so much. And we'll see you soon on another episode.